Hello everyone. Today's video has been sponsored by Babbel, the number one language learning app in the world. Perhaps you wanted to brush up on a language you started learning in the past, learn to get ahead in business, or for future travel plans. Either way, Babbel is the solution for you, as unlike many other language apps, you aren't bombarded with ads every other minute, so you can focus on learning properly. Babbel has a strong focus on confidence building, which is an integral part when learning a language, so you feel ready out in the real world. This is why they also promote speaking, simulating conversations with native speakers, and using voice recognition technology to guarantee you're being steered in the right direction whilst learning language. For me, it's been really fun and engaging using this app for the past few weeks. As well as it being super easy to use and well designed, my Spanish needed work, but I'm happy to say that estoy mejorando mucho. For those of you who don't know, that means I'm getting much better. No doubt some of you are still self-isolating, so why not take the opportunity to learn something amazing? Click the link in the top of the description to get 50% off for six whole months. But hurry, it's a limited time only, so make the most of now. Gracias, Babel. Today we are looking at a case from the second half of the 19th century. So sit back as we go to the USA. Ellen Hardin was born on October the 20th, 1832, in Jacksonville, Illinois. Her father, John Hardin, served as a member of the Illinois House of Representatives between 1836 and 1842, before being elected to the United States Congress in 1843. He was killed on the 23rd of February 1847 in the Battle of Buena Vista, which was one of the largest battles in the Mexican-American War. Following her father's death, Ellen continued to live in Jacksonville with her mother named Sarah and her two brothers. Mansfield Woolworth was born in Albany, New York on the 3rd of December 1830 and was the youngest child of the renowned attorney Reuben Hyde Woolworth and his wife Maria Avery. Mansfield lived with his parents in a fine house in Pine Grove, just outside the small city of Saratoga Springs in the state of New York. Although his father was a strict man who made sure his children were brought up in a disciplined manner, Mansfield enjoyed a privileged childhood and was sent to the best schools. His teachers were impressed with his academic abilities and considered him to be an intelligent student but he was also known to have a somewhat arrogant nature. When he finished school, he studied law at Union College. In 1848, when Mansfield was 18 years old, his mother died. Although this had a deep effect on him, he continued his studies and graduated in 1849. He then started working as a lawyer. He never really liked his chosen career and he studied law on the insistence of his parents. Although the youngest of six children, he only had one brother, so his father had always expected both his sons to enter the legal profession. Mansfield's true vocation was writing, and he had great ambitions to become a published writer. Following Mansfield's mother's death, his father, Reuben Hyde Woolworth, continued working and supporting the family. In 1851, while on a trip to Kentucky, Mansfield's father met a 39-year-old widow named Sarah Hardin. She was an attractive lady with three children, two sons and a daughter, and shortly after they first met, Reuben proposed to her, and the couple were married in Harrodsburg in Mercer County, Kentucky. The family then took up residence in Reuben Hyde Woolworth's fine house in Pine Grove. Mansfield also lived in the house and it took him a while to come to terms with the fact that he now had a stepmother, two stepbrothers and a stepsister. But he soon adapted to the situation and he and Ellen started to spend a lot of time in each other's company. They both shared the love of literature and Ellen encouraged Mansfield 
to continue with his writing. Eventually, their friendship turned into something more serious, and Mansfield proposed to his stepsister. Ellen accepted, and they were married in 1852. Mansfield started to spend more time writing, and less time working on his legal career. The couple seemed happy, and by the start of the American Civil War, in 1861, Ellen had given birth to five children. On the 7th of February, 1862, Mansfield was arrested in Washington, D.C., along with a female associate named August Morris, as both were suspected of being Confederate spies. He was put in prison until, in April of the same year, his father's wealth and influence helped secure his release, and he returned to the house at Saratoga Springs. For the next few years, Mansfield continued to write and had some work published, including the novels A Tale of the Old Dutch Manor, Lula and Hotspur. His success, however, was limited, and although his books received some praise, there were also those who criticised his work. Mansfield started to become an angry and somewhat miserable gentleman. His marriage to Ellen had for some time been problematic, and he had subjected her to periods of physical and emotional abuse. He started to spend more time away from Saratoga Springs and took up residence in New York City. Rumours circulated that he was seeing other women. Eventually, Ellen grew tired of his behaviour and returned to live in Kentucky. On the 28th of November, 1867, Reuben Hyde Walworth died. By now, Mansfield was 36 years old. His grief over his father's passing was compounded when he realised that he would not directly inherit any of his father's estate and instead be granted an allowance, which was to be administered by his elder brother. Although Mansfield spent most of his time in New York City, on several occasions he attempted to reconcile with his wife. These attempts would invariably end in arguments, and Mansfield would continue with his aggressive nature towards Ellen, who had returned to Kentucky, sometimes bruised and sometimes pregnant. In 1871, she found herself pregnant with the couple's eighth child. Hoping that she could possibly mend the relationship with her husband, she travelled with the children to New York where she had an apartment. She contacted Mansfield and again attempted to talk to him about their differences and try to find a solution to their marital issues. She was a very intelligent lady and was concerned about her husband. He was, however, a very difficult man and instead of calmly discussing a way to reunite their family, he became very angry and accused her of attempting to persuade him to return to live in his childhood home at Pine Grove, just outside Saratoga Springs. He was so enraged that he struck Ellen, and when she tried to defend herself, he got hold of her hand and bit one of her fingers to the bone. Her screams and cries for help were heard by everyone in the apartment and by passers-by in the street. The couple's 17-year-old son Frank was in another room, so rushed to his mother's assistance. Ellen returned to Pine Grove and started divorce proceedings. Although Mansfield realised that a divorce may be the best way forward for himself and his wife, he found the terms she proposed totally unacceptable. Ellen, however, would no longer receive him at Pine Grove, so he was not able to shout at her or become physically abusive. Instead, he started to write her threatening and disparaging letters. Although Ellen was familiar with her husband's cruel nature, the letters still upset her, but Mansfield just carried on sending them. The couple's oldest son, Frank, had witnessed the breakdown of his parents' marriage and was concerned about his mother. Whenever she received a letter from his father, she would become upset, so he decided that he would no longer allow her to read them, and instructed the staff to deliver all correspondence from his father to himself, and no longer pass them on to his mother. Frank's relationship with his father was not close. During his childhood, he would not see him for long periods, 
so his bond with his mother was much stronger. In the summer of 1873, a letter arrived from Mansfield. The letter was written in his usual cruel and vindictive manner and accused Ellen of deliberately keeping the children away from him and manipulating them to think that he was not a good father. In the letter, Mansfield also threatened to harm both himself and his wife. Frank decided that the only way to end the letter writing and to get his father to agree to a compromise over the terms of a divorce was to speak to him. So on the 2nd of June, he boarded a train to New York City. When he arrived, he made his way to his father's residence. It was nothing like the grand house in Pine Grove. Mansfield now resided in a boarding house. When Frank arrived, his father had gone out, so he left a note asking for him to call at the Sturtevant House Hotel on Broadway. The next morning, June the 3rd, 1873, Mansfield Woolworth woke up early and made his way to the hotel to see his eldest child. It was six o'clock in the morning, a somewhat strange time to visit, but he arrived and was directed to room 267. He climbed the stairs and knocked on the door. Frank let his father into the room. It was nicely decorated and neatly furnished, a far nicer place to stay than the boarding house where Mansfield was living. A few minutes later, an altercation started. Guests in nearby rooms could hear the raised voices of Frank and his father. They were arguing, but it was difficult for anyone to make out exactly what they were saying. Suddenly, they heard four shots and everything went silent. Some guests opened the door of their rooms to see what was going on and they witnessed a young man calmly walk out of his room and along the corridor, past the horrified guests and down the stairs. The young man made his way to the reception and without a motion, he informed the front desk porter that he had just shot and killed his father. He then asked him to fetch a policeman. The police took Frank to the station on 13th Street, where he told them that his name was Frank H. Woolworth. He handed them his revolver and confessed to killing his father. After making a confession, he was taken to prison to await his trial. The trial began less than three weeks later, on June the 24th, 1873. The press had reported the incident and it had fascinated the public. A member of a rich aristocratic family being tried for the murder of his father was a story that would sell many newspapers. And as the public's interest increased, many additional copies were printed in order to meet the demand. Frank Woolworth had shot his father. The question was whether it was a calculated and planned action or had been done in self-defence or if he was possibly suffering from partial insanity. The defence wanted the letters that Mansfield had written his wife to be included in the trial but the prosecution argued that they should be excluded. When the judge agreed to include them, it gave the defence the opportunity to try and convince the court that Frank's mental health had been affected by his father's years of physical and emotional abuse towards his mother, Ellen. Frank had been known to have seizures, and doctors called by the defence informed the court that he suffered from epilepsy. The prosecution, however described how calm he was on the day of the murder and how he acted in a very rational way. They believed that he behaved like someone who was totally in control of their actions. The jury had the option in this case of finding the defendant guilty of first or second degree murder. As five days before Frank shot his father, the state of New York had passed a law which meant that when the action was not premeditated, a verdict of second-degree murder can be given. The trial ended on the 2nd of July, 1873, and the jury were sent out to deliberate. They returned to find the defendant guilty of second-degree murder, and the judge sentenced Frank H. Woolworth to life in prison. Frank's mother, Ellen, fought hard, 
to get her son's name cleared on the grounds of insanity. And a year after arriving at Sing Sing Prison, he was transferred to the asylum at Auburn. Ellen continued her campaigning, and on the 1st of August, 1877, just four years after shooting his father, Frank Walworth was released from prison after being pardoned by the governor of New York, Lucius Robinson. He returned to the Pine Grove House, and in December 1883, he married Corinne Bramlett, who three years later, in 1886, gave birth to a daughter, who they named Clara. Frank's health, however, was not good, and he suffered from a lung condition, which he eventually died from on October the 29th, 1886. Hello everyone, and thank you so much for listening. As usual, please leave any comments or feedback you may have, and I will see you in the next brief case.